The Atlanta campaign was one of the pivotal moments of the War of the Rebellion, which allowed the U.S. military machine to strike a devastating blow against the military-industrial complex in Georgia's heartland, disrupting vital military supplies. While some of the battlefields are preserved today by county parks, historic state parks, and the National Park Service, significant parts of the Battle of Atlanta are also buried under the urban sprawl of the city. This patchwork of different parks was initially envisioned very differently. This is the story of the Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site. On May 7, 1864, General William Tecumseh Sherman set his three armies in motion. The two sides had already skirmished in North Georgia for a few days, but now the campaign against Atlanta became a reality. After probing the rebel defenses around Dalton, Sherman sent the Army of the Tennessee under General James B. McPherson on a wide swing to the left. His opponents withdrew to the defenses at Resaca where the two sides fought, Mays 14 and 15. Once more, swinging around the flank, Sherman forced another withdrawal. From May 25 to June 5, the two armies fought and skirmished near New Hope Church, Pickett's Mill, and Dallas. For once, Sherman changed tactics, swinging around to the right and running into the enemy at Kennesaw Mountain. Heavy fighting, on June 27, caused significant casualties, but John Schofield's Army of the Ohio was able to get beyond the rebels' left and forced another withdrawal across the Chattahoochee River. Facing in John Bell Hood, a new enemy commander, Sherman pushed on undeterred, but after the fighting on July 20, 22, and 28, he settled for a siege of the city, which eventually ended when U.S. forces cut after the Battle of Jonesboro on August 31st and September 1st, the last railroad connection into Atlanta, the city fell the next day. In October 1944, the acting Secretary of the Interior, Abe Fortas, created the Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site with a grand total or acreage of 15 acres. Fortis used the general permission from Congress to set aside and preserve locations of national significance to justify the creation of the park. Oddly, he referred to the war between the states in quotation marks around the Atlanta campaign. Beneficial for Fortis was that the government had already in 1938, 39, and 1940 acquired land for markers to commemorate the battles of Ringgold Gap, Rocky Face Ridge, Resaca, Cassville, and New Hope Church. At Ringgold Gap, Fortis had 4.26 acres of it, 6.4 acres Rocky Face Gap. Resaca was divided into three plots, with one being 6.2 acres and the other two less than half an acre in size. Castle, where technically no battle had taken place, 
contained 2.5 acres, and New Hope Church, again less than an acre of land. Running along most of these small parcels of land was Dixie Highway, which connected Florida with the Midwestern state, similar to I-75 today. The parks could hope was a growing tourism industry in North Georgia to gain more attention and visitors. In many ways, Fortis's plan fits with the Antietam plan, approach or to preservation, even if here taken to a minuscule size. The park was short-lived. In 1950, Congress debated the transfer of the about 15 acres of land used by the Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site to the state of Georgia. H.R. 3274 permitted the state to continue using the properties for historic commemoration or for other purposes. Included in the transfer were not just the five properties set aside by Fortis in 1944, but also the Neo Schoder marker property, which indicated the location of the Cherokee capital inside of the important removal treaty. More so, the assumption was that the U.S. government had only acted as a caretaker anyways, since the properties were eventually designed to go to the state of Georgia, especially since the properties were widely spraced out and along roads maintained by the state. The Department of the Interior concurred with Congress and supported the bill. On March 20, 1952, the park ceased to exist and all land was transferred. The Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site represents a failed opportunity to take the kernel created by these small parks to expand these five small pockets into larger parks eventually. The arrival of urban sprawl, even if limited in I-75, have vanquished many of the signs. Valiantly, in the last decades, groups, locally and nationally, have made an effort to correct this error. Today, Ringgold Gap, Rocky Face Ridge, and Caswell do not have any parks to commemorate the fighting that had taken place there. Since the 1970s, the Pickus Mill Battlefield is part of the National Register of Historic Places, and in the application, the state acknowledged that it was working on turning the site into a historic state park, which exists today. A wise decision at the time, as the park is today surrounded by the suburban development of Atlanta. Meanwhile, at Resaca, the city had done some work to preserve Fort Wayne, far behind the battle lines, and somewhat damaged in the process of making the site accessible. In addition, by 2001, there was a conversation in Georgia to preserve part of the Resaca battlefield west of Interstate 75. Budget issues delayed the purchase of the land. But in 2016, the Friends of the Resaca Battlefield Inc. could celebrate the opening of the battlefield with its about 1,100 acres of preserved land. The Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site represents an odd historical park, but also a great opportunity of having the ability to tell the story of the Atlanta campaign in a unified fashion throughout the northern parts of Georgia. While obviously the battles around Atlanta itself had already been lost by the time this park came into existence, there were still a lot of opportunities to tell the campaign's a story. Sadly, by handing the Atlanta Campaign National Historic Site over to Georgia, the National Park Service lost a great opportunity to tell the story of this pivotal campaign. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.